Hello everyone, it's the Techno Trainer here, and today I'm going to be explaining the wonder of phenomena. I know it's a dramatic introduction, but I promise it's a useful tool for completing your decks in the Generation 5 games, as well as acquiring some evolutionary items. What is a phenomenon? As far as the Pokemon universe goes, it's a unique method exclusive to the Generation 5 games of catching Pokemon and finding items. You've probably seen them before, too, if you've ever hunted for experience by finding Audino. Phenomenon aren't always easy to encounter, of course. While walking in a route or area, there's a small chance for a phenomenon to occur. If you're ever looking for one specifically, then I recommend just walking around in that area until one occurs. Now, there are four types of phenomena, each with their own set of Pokemon and items to be obtained from. The four types are... Rustling Grass, Dust Clouds, Flying Shadows, and Rippling Water. The first we'll cover is Rustling Grass, as it's both the most common and the most basic method. You can see this phenomenon in any route where there is regular tall grass or regular long grass. By walking into this patch that is rustling, you have a chance of encountering a specific pool of Pokemon that is separate from the regular grass nearby. For instance, in the rustling grass here, at the giant chasm, there is a chance to encounter a Metagross, whereas in the normal grass, in the same exact spot, you cannot find this Pokemon. The second type of phenomena are dust clouds. Found only in caves, they work the same way as rustling grass in terms of overworld mechanics. When you walk into a dust cloud, there is a 50% chance of finding one of the 17 type gems, a 40% chance of encountering a wild Pokemon, and a small 10% chance of finding a stone. Depending on the cave, the Pokemon you will find will be either a Drillbur or Excadrill, and if you're playing Black and White 2, you might find an Onix or Steelix as well. The third type of phenomena are flying shadows. These are only findable in two locations, Phil's Drawbridge and Marvelous Bridge. If you walk into these small shadows on the ground, you'll have an 80% chance of finding one of the wing items or a 20% chance of finding a Pokemon. Driftfield's Drawbridge will spawn Ducklet, while Marvelous Bridge will spawn Swanna. The fourth and final type of phenomena is rippling water. As the name states, it's found in, well, the water, and you can either access it by surfing into the rippling water or fishing into the rippling water. And what you choose to do actually affects the pool of Pokemon you have access from. You will mostly find different species depending on the method of encounter. For instance, if you're surfing into the rippling water, you will probably find a Pokemon that is not in the same pool as if you were fishing into the rippling water. A phenomenon has a possibility of occurring each time the player takes a step in the route, area, or room. It will stay accessible unless it's interrupted by one of a few methods. The first is encountering a wild Pokemon, which is why I recommend using a Max Repel all the time when you're trying to do this. You can also ruin this by talking to an NPC, picking up any item, or in general, leaving the area. Again, if you're specifically looking for a phenomenon, I recommend you bring some max repels, and you'll probably be finding yourself riding back and forth on a bike trying to get one to occur. Anyways, trainers, that's all I have on the topic of phenomenon today. If you have any questions or feel I didn't explain anything well enough, please let me know in the comments. I'll try my best to clarify any questions. Technos out.